Okay, rolling. Five, four, three. Okay, today we're going to do some floor plan rendering uh, by hand with markers. And what I've done is put some tracing paper over my drafted floor plan, which I'm going to render on. And I'm going to start off with some wood floor. And when we do wood floor on floor plan, just exactly the same as when we did in perspective, we're going to choose three colors, basically a light, medium, and dark. And we're going to blend them together. So I'm going to start off with whichever one is my darkest. Um, right now I'm using an E29 burnt umber. And you want to go in the direction of the wood. And you can see that I've already put some lines on here. And don't be too too regular with it. You want to be a little irregular. And I guess I'll do this in part two. Switch to my next color, which is E59 Walnut, which is a great color that I use all the time. I'm gonna do my lightest color last. I used E, I have in my hand E57, which is light walnut. I'm gonna use this one to fill in any spaces I haven't done yet and kind of blend things a little bit too. Anywhere I have little spots like that, you can just go in and blend. Okay, to make this look a little bit more like wood, I'm going to use a dark brown pencil. This is Prismacolor Dark Umber. And I'm just going to make a couple of uh, lines, not too straight, kind of organic, but not, not too uh, curvy either, just to represent some wood grain. Just like we have done in the past in some of the other videos. And there we go, wood floor. And then um, when we put some shadows over it at the end, you'll see that it'll definitely kind of fade back the background and really look like wood. Okay. So the next thing that we can do, um, how about the carpet? The best way to deal with carpet, whether it's wall-to-wall -wall carpet or area rugs, rather than um, doing smooth strokes with your marker, what you want to do is actually dab this. And you can use either end of the marker to do this with. Either one should work, as long as you have enough ink in it. And you'll see that um, it really looks more like, like carpet than if you were to kind of do strokes like that. So You can even use more than one color if you like, and of course if there's a pattern, you can do that too. Etc. Etc. Okay. We'll just do that for now. I guess I can't leave it unfinished. Here we go. Okay. Next thing I wanted to do was uh, take a look at doing some of the glass. If um, we take a look in the kitchen, I've got a couple of bar stools over here. Um, I'm going to. Let's try making these. That's oh, too much of the wood color. Well, I'm just gonna go back to this kind of weird lavender color I used. Let's use this to just color the bar stools right here. And you can see that um, this part is supposed to be glass right here. So I'm going to take my B91, which is pale, let's see, pale grayish blue. And what we wanna do is have some stripes of the blue. Blue isn't showing up very much, so I'm going to grab um, a little bit of a dark blue. I'm going to have to blend it 
that's gonna be way too dark. That's okay. So I'm using marker. I'm using I'm sorry, tracing paper so I can still blend with it. There we go. And the trick with doing glass is you want to leave um, some stripes, some reflections in the glass, and you want those to be different widths from each other and different spaces between them so it doesn't start to look like stripe. So for example, um, let's do this coffee table as well as if that was glass. And um, I'm gonna put down some blue right here and then pick that up with my lighter blue since it wasn't really showing up before. I'll just do a little blending, so about like that. So we're leaving some reflections in there. Just don't want it to be um, too similar to each other, then it'll look like stripes, and that's not really what we're going for. Okay, so speaking of shadows, we can go ahead and add some shadows now. Normally I would add shadows to, well sometimes I do it on the back, sometimes I do it on the front. It kind of depends. Let's start with, let's start with our little floor pillows that we've got over there. I'm going to use a warm gray six um, because this is a warm color, that, that kind of lavender is warm. So I'm going to add like that. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to my shadows as well. I'm, gonna, I'm using uh, B99. I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue in. That's way too strong of a blue, but I'm gonna go back in and blend it again. And when we're doing shadows, basically, you choose one corner of your floor plan to use as your light source. It would be much too time consuming to look at every window and figure out where the light is coming from. So it's just kind of an architectural convention to pick one corner and, and there's no rules to it. It's pretty common to kind of use the top left corner. So that's gonna be our sun. That's where our light is coming from. So all of our shadows are now gonna be at a 45 degree angle from that, like this. And once again, I think we can add a little bit of blue shadow. And I talk about shadows in depth in the text. But really, um, it's not something that anyone's ever going to, you know, if you mess up and you accidentally put shadows on the wrong side, it is not worth redoing your entire floor plan. Because so nobody's ever going to notice that. No one is ever going to look and say, oh, the shadows are on the wrong side. So just keep going with it, not important. Some shadows. Also, I've got a step right here. So anytime you have a step, you wanna do a little bit of a shadow as well. So since I've got some steps there, I'll add some shadows. I always like to put a little bit of blue in my shadows. Some people prefer to just use gray. I especially like to put blue in the shadow if, uh, if it's a floor plan that is very monochromatic because it does some, you know, add some life and color to the drawing, which is something we're trying to do all the time. So I'm gonna add a shadow also right here, and also from all of these little pillows. These are all some shadows. Let's see, some blue. Go back in and blend those. Um, and then if we look in our kitchen, we have also a shadow right here and here. Additionally, one underneath the bar stools, and since that's glass and we're seeing through it, it's transparent, so we still want to see what's going on underneath it. Um, something that I believe we've talked about before, um, how to render pillows, but just in case we haven't, let's go over it again. You just want to always make it lighter in the center and darker on the sides. So you can always use, if it's a warm color, use, use a warm gray to shade with. Go back in.
and you just want to keep them lighter in the center and that way because it goes back to that same principle we've talked about quite a few times uh, lighter closer to you darker farther away and so those should look somewhat realistic okay great um, oh I forgot to do my sink it's another spot which is recessed so of course that's going to have a little bit of a shadow as well thing that I want to do is I want to talk about oh let's do some let's do some natural stone um, and I've got a couple areas I wanted to work with one of them is over here in the bathroom so if I wanted this to look like let's say slate um, if you want it to look like any kind of natural stone get some different colors that represent uh, your stone and then you want to kind of um, blob them in without being too careful about it. Let's see, and we want to put in maybe a little bit of blue as well. But you definitely want to do that same dabbing motion like we did earlier on the carpet. If you do anything too regular, it's going to end up looking, well, either like carpet or like linoleum, something kind of mass produced, which is not what we want. Okay, and then we can go in and add a couple shadows right there, right there, and blend those. Okay, and now in order to make these little tiles look like they're 3D, I'm just going to go in and put little L's on them. So just pick one side, you know, two sides. I'm doing the left side and the top of each square. It's very quick and it really makes them jump out and be very 3D. You can also do this trick in elevations for backsplashes. You can do it in perspective as well. And there we go. Then we have some 3D looking um, flooring. Okay. Um, the very last thing that I do when it comes to both the wood floor and also um, and also the tile floor is to add the, the planks with a black pen and to add the grout lines with um, either a black pencil or pen or white pencil too sometimes works. So let's see. There we go. Definitely want to do it last so it doesn't get all messed up. And this is something you would want. If you don't have it drawn on the plan underneath, definitely use your scale because if they are not exact, your eye is gonna notice right away and it'll look strange. So same thing over here. I'm not gonna do them all, but we'll do a couple. Once again, it's kind of the last thing that you wanna do. Great. So another technique I want to show you, it's one that's kind of special, um, what we're going to be doing is actually painting with the markers. And I'm going to use some of this. This is um, the Copic Colorless Blender Medium. This is what goes inside the colorless blenders, which you can buy in a bottle. Um, additionally, you could use 97% uh, alcohol from the drugstore, which is about 99 cents, um, and that will work with any alcohol-based markers like Copics and Prismacolors. If you're using xylene-based markers, you can actually use lighter fluid to paint with. Um, there we go. I'm just going to pour some in a little cup right here. What I'm going to do is try and replicate marble. And as you know, marble has kind of an, 
an organic, um, veiny kind of look to it. So for right here, for these countertops, I'm going to try and replicate marble. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use almost like a warm gray, a warm gray four. I'm just going to draw in some, some veins. And then I'm going to use a Q-tip. You could also use a, a paintbrush if you like. Just dipped in that uh, colorless marker solution. And I'm going to just kind of play with it a little and let it run. I'm not sure if that's dark enough. Let's go back over it. a little bit of a darker marker. And this is something that you can just kind of play with and go back and forth. Because um, it's difficult to render marker, I'm sorry, it's difficult to render marble with marker because it is such an organic thing. There we go, that looks pretty good. Let's do this one too. Some nice, some nice veins. Go back in with some of our medium. And you can just, just play with it. Just go back and forth with your marker and your medium, just trying to make it look, make it all happen naturally, organically. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, and then just make sure that you add, oh, I'm missing one shadow right here. This is actually a little bit higher than the marble counter, so we can go and add that right there. And then I think that we're done.